Good afternoon. Hello, how are you? I'm sorry, I thought we were at the Prince George's County Public Safety Luncheon honoring, you know, right. good people. Right. So, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ah. How about it? Good to see you. Good to be here. I've got this just yeah, in case. Yeah, just in case. We're going to do this like this. This way. We talked to Dr. Shell a few minutes ago. Yeah, I don't we got our swine flu update. and We've been just, coughing you don't mind, over uh, there. So. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, you know, well, welcome to the 2009 edition of Beauty and the Beast. Thank you for, for, join, for joining us. You know. That's very nice, you Dave. Like, yeah, yeah, that is nice. But tell the truth what you did the other day. She's reading a story, a lovely, beautiful anchor woman is reading a story on the air, what we call a voiceover. She's reading and there's video playing behind. All of a sudden, my picture pops up in the middle. This is a true story, I'm not making this up. What was it, a week and a half ago? It was a week and a half ago. And she gasps in the middle of her copy and it starts laughing. Well, there was a shot of Dave on one side when he was like 20 and skinny, and then a shot of him now. And so, you know, it scared us. We were like, what happened? You know, speaking of that, uh, Vernon here, he is, co is correct. Actually, it was before WTOP. It was 1979, and I was Metro Traffic when we met on, on the uh, Beltway at the Wilson Bridge, and I would take the flares from Trooper Herrick. And um, the, the thing is, you know, we were young, we were handsome, we were skinny, one of us was tall. <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> Can I tell another funny story about you really quick? Is Dave, you know, he tells all of us that, yeah, I used to be in fire service, and I was a dispatcher, and at the time, there were several of us that were pregnant in the newsroom. And so Dave says, hey, Leslie, you know, because at this point I was a landmass, and he said, hey, Leslie, I just want you to know that I used to be in the fire department, and you know, if anything happens, and I'm like, really? The women all would run the other way and make yeah. sure there were nowhere around when, yeah. that, when, when that time came. You know, I used to sit in the audience here for many, many years for these awards, and I was promised for many, many years that I would get to come up here to MC. I was promised by some good friends in previous administrations, and it would always get nixed. What would happen is I'd do a story that would make the police department unhappy, they'd oh. veto it, or I'd do the story that made the fire department unhappy, mm. they'd veto it. Do you know, I got to do it finally a few years back when Mr. Johnson took over, and now I'm up here for the second time. Unbelievable. So I, I, I figure from this that what I get out of this is that Dave Statter is the favorite TV reporter of the administration of Jack Johnson. Is that correct, Mr. Johnson? I am gonna put that, I'm gonna put that on my blog this afternoon, statter911.com. Now he's not gonna be able to get in the newsroom because his head is gonna be so big. <laughs> Two times. Look, we've got, we've got an important job today yes. because we get to help you honor your own. And we always love being around people who are in the fire service and they serve us as police officers and sheriffs because there's a lot of love in the room, a lot of hugs, you know, strong pictures. Even though when you look at those pictures, you got the, you know, why, I always wondered why they make those faces. But we love being around you because you are so warm and you are so giving. And, and it gives us something to be here with you. And so. So, enough of our foolishness. That's At this right. time, will the first group of today's recipients please come forward and take your place? Will the agency directors and county officials please come forward as well and we will get started? She continuously updated the status of the call for service in the computer aided dispatch system for responding fire and EMS personnel. On Tuesday, July 8th, 2008, around 1.45 p.m., <coughs> Public Safety Communications received calls from several citizens who indicated an elderly occupant of the home was possibly trapped inside. The critically injured patient was flown to a nearby burn center. Police officer First Class Stephen Jackson was working secondary employment at an apartment complex in Langley Park when he smelled some smoke. Officer Jackson searched the area for the origin of the smoke and discovered smoke emanating from a second floor apartment. Bronze Medal of Valor presented to volunteer firefighter Kenneth D. Wilson. Master Corporal Tara Gray is awarded the Bronze Medal of Valor. The driver continued out the parking lot and into Washington, D.C., where all four suspects were eventually apprehended. Heavy fire coming from the second and third floors on the front side of the building. Police officer Michael Janung 
police officer Michael Meyerly. As these brave officers approached the crash site, they found that Trooper 2 was leaking 400 to 600 pounds of JP fuel. The fire was quickly contained and extinguished by the pair, who then conducted a primary search of the bedroom and located an unconscious adult female victim. But suddenly, Corporal Brooks found herself in a fight for her life. That driver intentionally gunned the truck, drove head-on into the front of her cruiser, knocking her vehicle back into a jersey barrier behind her. For her professionalism, she is awarded the Bronze Medal of Valor. Congratulations. Paramedic unit from the Glendale Fire EMS station responded to Storch Drive in Lanham for a reported severe allergic reaction and trouble breathing.